Dr. Kamin, let's discuss dose titration in PAH medications. Okay. Yes, all of our medications, actually except one, require some dose titration. The prostacycline medications are the ones that we really are, have to be careful to start at low doses and then slowly up titrate so that patients can manage side effects and, and stay on therapy. But all of our other medications too uh, require a little bit of dose titration. We have the endothelin receptor antagonist, for example, Bocentin is started at a, a lower dose for a month and then increased to the highest, the higher dose. Um, and then ambrosentin is a medication that's uh, approved in two different doses and usually we'll start at the lowest dose for a month and then increase to the higher dose. Um, as far as the PDE5 inhibitors though, um, we have two um, Tadalafil is usually started for just a week at a lower dose so that if patients are going to have headache or side effects that they are able to tolerate them a little better. And then at, at week two, we go to the full dose, which is two tablets. And then the other PDE5 inhibitor is sildenafil, and it's approved just for one dose. And we usually just keep patients on that initially approved FDA dosing. Um, and then there's a soluble guanylate cyclase stimulator, which is titrated. It started at, at a low dose of one milligram three times a day and then increased by 0.5 milligrams every two weeks until patients um, reach 2.5 milligrams uh, TID. Or if they get hypotension, then we stop earlier. But it's really the prostacyclines where we focus on the issues around titrations. So you have goals, but, but dosing is patients uh, specific? Very patient specific. There are um, guidelines that are written out on how to titrate prostacyclines. One thing unfortunately is in the epiprostanol and the triprostanol package inserts, they uh, are, are not consistent with how we do titrations in clinical practice. So f whenever we start patients on a parenteral prostacycline, whether it's epiprostanol or triprostanol, they're admitted to the hospital and they have their central line placed. And then they go into our specialty unit where nurses are highly trained on how to take care of these patients. We start at very low doses and then we increase every 12 hours or once a day until we're at a, about a six to 10 nanogram per kilogram per minute dose. And then at that point, the patients go home and they finish the up titration at home under our guidance and close contact with the patients. And they contact us if they have side effects and then we work through those side effects with the patients. We also uh, are very proactive in letting patients know the plan. So if, for instance, if they are having GI side effects, we tell them, you know, make sure you have Imodium at home and we prescribe them a medication for nausea so that if they have a little bit of nausea that they have that at home to take care of that. And then again, the Tylenol and, and on rare occasions, maybe some stronger pain medication just during the titration phase. And then usually things settle down when we get to the maintenance dosing. Dr. Kingman, let's talk a little bit about inhaled prostacyclins. So we have the inhaled prostacyclins as well. Again, not as potent as our parenteral prostacyclins, but there are options for some, a subset of patients. And we have two of them, and they both are also titrated. Uh, the first one being Iloprost is started at a, a lower dose and then increased to the maximum dose. And again, it's dosed six to nine times a day. We do try to really aim for six times a day. It's hard to get patients to do much more frequently than six times a day. And then Traprostanil, which is inhaled as well, is titrated in breaths. So patients start at three breaths four times a day. And then about three days later, we go up to six breaths four times a day. Three or four days later, go to nine breaths four times a day. And then we keep them at nine breaths four times a day, which is the, the final dosing. So then we have these medications that fall in the prostacycline pathway that are oral, that are newer agents. One of them being oral triprostanil. It was studied in clinical trials initially in T, uh, BID dosing, meaning twice a day. And what we found that the side effects were really, really difficult. Patients were having trouble staying on therapy. So what they did was they changed the dosing to three times a day and made smaller tablets where the dose could be increased at smaller increments. The other medication that's in this pathway is called Selexapeg, which is a prostacyclin receptor agonist as opposed to technically a prostacyclin, but the effects are prostacyclin effects and the side effects are prostacyclin side effects. It's dosed in 200 microgram tablets. Patients start at 200 micrograms twice a day and then weekly they go up by 200 micrograms twice a day 
until they reach their highest tolerated dose, meaning um, the side effects become too severe, then we lower to the prior week and that becomes their dose. Or they may reach the, the high dose, which is 1,600 micrograms twice a day. And actually in clinical trials, 75% of patients get to 1,600 micrograms twice a day. But again, we have a, a proactive plan in place so that patients, if the side effects are mild, can manage those at home. Um, this is just an example of how Selexapeg is titrated. You can see that each week they get an uh, increase in their pill, number of pills. Um, what's uh, important to know, though, is once they do reach their, their determined dose, if it's 1,600 micrograms, for example, the pharmacy will send them a, one tablet that's 1,600 micrograms. So they don't end up taking a whole lot of pills twice a day. That's just during the titration phase. But once whatever dose they end up on, they are just on one pill twice a day. This sounds very complex. Is this too complex for all medical providers? Yes, I think the, the important lesson is that these are complex patients and they're complex medical um, treatments. They require a lot of nursing care, a lot of phone contact, a lot of visits in the office, and really patients, if they're at the point that they need these advanced therapies, should really be referred to a, a, a center of excellence, a pulmonary hypertension center of excellence. Very good, Dr. King. Thank you. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much.